Yeah, dear participants, uh, welcome to the course of supply chain digitization. Uh, it is jointly taught by Professor Priyanka Barma, Professor Susmita Narayana and myself Professor Devabrata Das from Indian Institute of Management, Mumbai. So, in the last uh, lecture of module 3, uh, which is part of analytics in supply chain management module, we talked about what is analytics what are the various characteristic of analytics. We also talked about big data, uh, what are its characteristic, various views of big data. So, now in this session, uh, we will focus mainly on various types of analytics, like how do we define various types of analytics and lot of example from supply chain management domain. Now, these are the main uh, four types of analytics which you can see over here. The first one is descriptive analytics and then we have diagnostic analytics, then we have predictive analytics and then we have prescriptive analytics. So, these are the four important analytics uh, which we have. So, in that throughout the next uh, like few minutes, we will see. Uh, like where these kind of analytics can be applied specifically in supply chain management domain because this course is on supply chain digitization. So, our focus would be uh, in supply chain management and specifically where analytics can be used. So, let us understand these four types of analytics in detail. So, the first one is descriptive analytics. So, that means Specifically, if you have uh, heard about descriptive statistics, uh, so this is nothing but in a simple manner descriptive statistics. It talks about uh, what has happened in the past. So, I have data from the past. If I can capture it properly, I will get to know what is the average value. So, let us say if you have a demand data of various stock keeping units from the last 2-3 years, I can actually find out what was the average demand per year, what is the average demand per month, what is the median demand, now, how the demand is changing uh, month to month. So, all of these are possible through descriptive analytics based on the past data. That means, whatever has happened, you have captured data from those uh, points and then you try to find out how data is changing, like what is the average value, what is the median value, what is the standard deviation of the data, is there any variability and so on. So, the good example could be I can use bar chart, I can use pie chart and nowadays lot of good uh, software are coming which is actually creating dashboard. Okay. So, I have Power BI, Tableau. So, descriptive analytics can be very nicely plotted in the dashboard and as a CEO level. So, let us say you are managing the supply chain of a big uh, FMCG company. I need to know like in which DC, how many units are there, in which warehouse, uh, how many uh, products are lying and it is not being sold. I also want to know in which zone products are sold at a very fast rate. I also want to know in which month how much was my sale. So, all of this can be easily captured using a dashboard and descriptive analytics can be useful for creating such dashboard. Okay? So, that is uh, specifically about descriptive analytics. Now, we have second one called diagnostic analytics and as you can see the image of like uh, microscope, we also have lens. So, this is basically saying like if something has happened 
why it has happened like why did it happen so let us say uh, from here the bar chart i can see that for this product a my sale was low so i need to get to know why the demand went low what was the reason similarly i can see for this product b the demand went up so what was the reason why the demand of product b went up obviously i'll be happy if demand goes up but i also need to know why the demand went up if i can know the reason obviously next time i will try to uh, like do the similar kind of activity so that sales of product b keeps on increasing on the other hand if i get to know the reason of product a why it demand why its demand went down then obviously i will take care of it i will make sure that i will not do that activity in the future i will take some corrective action so maybe some competitors have come in the market and they have taken away my uh, demand so i have to make sure that they are uh, like if i have to make sure that i am tracking my competitors movement and accordingly i am positioning myself so the demand of a again goes up so that is being done through diagnostic analysis so if some and like some event happen which are not as per my expectation if i want to diagnose it i will be able to do it through diagnostic analysis so root cause analysis also i can do to find out uh, why there is an issue then the next part of analytics is called predictive analytics it talks about what will happen so descriptive tells what has happened in the past so suppose from the past data i can see that demand of product b is going up demand of product b is going up now i have to predict whether the demand of product b will keep on going up in the future or what will happen so descriptive analytics is focusing only on the past data whereas predictive analytics taking the past data and modeling it and predicting what will happen in the future so for product a we saw that demand has gone down in the past so will it still go down or not so that is what the predictive analytics will do now uh, the th fourth one is prescriptive analytics so what is it it tells me what should be done so suppose uh, for product b descriptive analytics says the demand was very high predictive analytics said that demand will keep on going up in the next 2 3 years then i have to think what should i do so let us say demand of product b is going up going up going up and i have a capacity very limited so obviously if demand is more than capacity then i will not be able to serve so i have to expand my capacity so the problem should be like how do i expand my capacity should i add a new plant or should i outsource it to some third party so all of this decision has to be taken through prescriptive analytics so this is basically in simple term descriptive diagnostic predictive and prescriptive i am sure like you got some idea about this so in the next few slides what i will do will give example of each of this uh, from the supply chain lens so let us uh, take this example uh, part of descriptive analytics so first i will analyze the past demand of various products so i can use bar chart i can use pie chart i can also use dashboard as you talked about in the last slide so i will get to know what has happened in the past and as i can see so let us say this is for product b the demand is up and demand is very high so through predictive analytics i will be able to predict whether demand will keep on going up or not if demand keeps on going up as we discuss in the last next uh, last slide so i have to decide first of all that 
whether uh, should I have another plant or not first decision because if demand is more than my capacity I have to plan for it so I if because plan cannot be installed in a day so I have to plan for it so prescriptive analytics helps me to plan that means if demand goes up and crosses my capacity then the next question would be where should I have my next plant where the plant should be near to the demand location plant should be near to the supplier location and where the plant location should be what would be the capacity of the next plant if I do not want to have plant I have to outsource this so whom should I outsource like who will uh, manufacture my products I also have to take that decision and if my demand goes up I need more raw material more component so who will supply me this component like if there are multiple suppliers if there are multiple suppliers with me then the question is whom should I select so out of so many suppliers which are impaneled with me who will give me the extra material and then I have to select decide how much to order from them so let us say I selected 10 suppliers from each of these suppliers how many quantities of products should I take it from that is again decision so basically optimization so in a nutshell so in a nutshell we do optimization over here as a part of prescriptive analysis which will minimize my cost which will maximize my profit minimize my risks so that all other uh, constraints are satisfied and it becomes efficient uh, for my organization uh, to do so then we'll give another example uh, let us say again an example of descriptive analytics from supply chain point of view uh, there there are cases where quality failure happen so many a time in manufacturing setup quality failure happens and although digitization happened although automation has come but still there are products uh, which fails in the quality inspection so let us say i have product uh, x y z so and i have found out that the product z finished product z uh, which is being manufactured in my factory are having lot of quality issues although x and y quality is perfect but for product j there are lot of quality issues specifically in the last four five months so i am producing three products but only product j is having lot lot quality issues so that i get to know through descriptive analytics okay so now once i get to know that product z is having lot of quality issues then i can do diagnostic analytics to check for it like why there is a quality issues i need to find out the root cause for the failure so i will see through a microscope and see like what is the reason so i can go to the uh, root cause and find out like which part or which component is having a problem if the product is failed which part is giving uh, issue which part is not correct so after doing lot of this diagnostic analysis suppose i find out that there is a component c1 there is a component c1 which is there in part which is there in uh, product j which is causing me problem so the part the component c1 is giving me a problem so component c1 is not of good quality so because of since comp uh, component c1 is part of product j because of that product j is also getting failed so now i need to find out who are my supplier who is supplying me component 1 so let us say i found out that supplier 1 is giving me component 1 so then i will talk to the supplier 1 and give them the data then the last 3 4 months my product z is getting failed repeatedly and you have component c1 which i got it from you is causing the problem so then the supplier will be notified we will have a talk with the suppliers and then obviously depending upon the contract you will take a action 
Now the question is obviously I cannot carry forward with the supply supplier one. So whom to select as a supplier? So supplier one obviously I will not go with. I have supplier two. I have supplier three. I have supplier four. I have supplier five, and so on. So out of these suppliers, supplier one is cancelled obviously because of the quality issue. Now out out of these so many suppliers, whom should I select? Who will be able to give me uh, component C1? So I have to decide that. For that, I will use prescriptive analytics. So prescriptive analytics is nothing but optimization, as we talked about in the uh, last slide. So I need to optimize and find out which suppliers should I select. Out of so many suppliers which are listed with me, who can give me complaint on? I have to see what what I have to see. I have to see their cost. I have to see their delivery time. I have to see their responsiveness and so on. So there are multiple factors uh, based on which I would select the supplier. So I will take this data. And optimize and find out who would be my uh, best supplier who can give me the C1 at a minimum cost, you know, the shortest delivery time, having good responsiveness, and the last but not the least, the quality. And there will be some other parameters also. So I am not listing it down all the parameters, but let us see these are four major parameters. Based on that, you have to decide who would be my supplier. So this is a second example of. Uh, starting from descriptive analytics, we are doing diagnostic analytics and finally prescriptive analytics. So this is another set of problem uh, which is related to the quality failure in manufacturing setup. Then uh, I will give another example uh, from uh, supply chain again, and it can be extended to any other domain also. This is related to the performance of worker. Uh, Basically, in Indian context, like lot of manual labor work is there, although automation is happening, but still, like we have lot of man like labor who are working in the factories, warehouses. So we need to check their uh, performance. Okay, so how can I check their performance? Okay, so first, based on the past data, I can see like how they were utilized, how much efficient they were. If you go to a, let us say, a sorting facility of an e-commerce company, you will see lot of pick uh, like uh, pickers, packers are there who are doing uh, like sorting activity. So everybody has some goal in mind because e-commerce company wants like two hours delivery, twelve hours delivery, one day delivery, forty-eight hours delivery. So if I have to fulfill that. Then in the back end, I also have to sort the product in that rate. I also have to pack it in the that rate. I have to bag it in that in that rate. So therefore, uh, these worker who are working in the sorting facility has to make sure that they are following that timeline. So if I have the past data, I know who has followed the timeline, who has not followed the time, who is efficient, who is not efficient. So descriptive analytics will give me that idea. Based on their past performance, who is efficient, who is not so efficient, then I can develop an predictive analytics model, uh, let us prediction model, to find out what would be their efficiency in the future. So although they are efficient in the past, some of them, but will they remain efficient? Okay, so I can predict that and find out that in the next six months, who are the worker. Who is most efficient? Who are the worker who are not so efficient? Who are the worker who are mediocre efficient? I can get the efficiency score, which is the predicted efficiency score, not the actual, but predicted efficiency score. So if I have the predicted efficiency score, uh, then whenever the next work happen, I can allocate them. I can do allocation of work based on the predicted efficiency score. So now. Uh, Uh, let us say when the Diwali season comes in India, uh, the demand of electronics item, demand of e-commerce products goes up like anything. 
so that time i need the employee who is very very efficient uh, because if you make some delay obviously you will fall behind so i have to make sure the best of the best resources are there available to me who can do picking process very fast who can do bagging of items very fast and efficient manner who cannot make mistake who should not like who does not make a much uh, mistake so what happens in the specifically in the e-commerce industry you will have their customers address and pin code that is how the sorting happens and if i pack wrong items uh, and send it to wrong person obviously the customers will not be happy and satisfied so therefore i have to make sure that at sorting facility i am sorting the correct items and sending it to the correct pin code and that error is minimized so if that is the objective i can use this till starting with descriptive analytics which will help me to find out who are the best performer who are the worst performers who are not so good performers i can predict their uh, efficiency score in the future i can use this score and find out and allocate who would be the workers who would be efficient and which job to be given to which worker so these are a flow of uh, like different types of analytics uh, which we use in the context of supply chain and specifically uh, in the worker allocation so lot of employees are there how to allocate the work uh, to the employees so that they can do the job more efficiently okay so there is uh, so these are few examples now we'll move to the uh, next slide where we'll summarize starting from procurement uh, to the last mail since till it reaches to the customers how different kind of analytics are being used okay so we have procurement uh, so here how analytics are being used as we saw in the last few slides also so the, i have many suppliers okay so out of these suppliers i have to select which supplier would be the best one for me so i have to see like their cost component like some supplier may give me the product at a lower cost uh, but the delivery is uh, delivery time will be more some other customers may be giving me the product at higher price but they can deliver the product at the shortest time also quality will be good some customers Uh, might give me at a lower price but they are not responsive so therefore how do i find out which supplier to be selected uh, from which i can procure my raw material i can procure my component and uh, so on so here i can select prescriptive analytics uh, to find out who would be my best suppliers uh, from which i have to procure my items then the next question is if you select 3 4 suppliers i have to decide which supplier how much quantity should i procure it from that is also an optimization model which can be part of uh, prescriptive analytics then also uh, i can predict their behavior like in future how will they behave uh, what would be their uh, predicted cost if i take the products from them then next uh, in the context of uh, manufacturing once you get the products raw materials component from the various suppliers in manufacturing facility uh, i start producing the uh, products producing the finished good for each finished good i have to check their quality i have to inspect uh, whether each part is good component or bad component or so on so as we discussed that image analytics are being used nowadays uh, for checking quality of the parts and in the last class of analytics module we saw the example of uh, cheap manufacturing facility where you uh, image analytics are being used to check whether good quality uh, cheap is being produced or not in the manufacturing setup there is another Uh, example of uh, predictive maintenance okay predictive maintenance 
So, what happens in predictive maintenance? So, in the manufacturing facility like many a time like parts uh, that machine gets broken down. So, if I do predictive maintenance then I will be alerted that this machine might be uh, broken down in future or in next 2 3 days. So, I can take action accordingly. So, this is one uh, good example of predictive maintenance uh, which is a part of predictive analytics in the uh, manufacturing setup. Then we have uh, warehousing. So, once your product is finished product is done, uh, a quality is checked then it comes to the warehouse. So, in warehouse a uh, lot of analytics can be used. So, we will uh, start with slotting optimization. start is slotting optimization. So, what happens here? So, warehouse typically are large warehouse like 1 lakh square feet, 1.5 lakh, 2 lakh square feet huge uh, space is there. So, there are multiple slots. So, which slot, which product to be kept so that I can optimize my space. I can also be quick to pick the items and I can find it very easily. So, let us take an example of slow moving versus fast moving. So, if the item is fast moving, I have to keep the slots in such location so that quickly I can pick it up and send it for the delivery. If I keep the fast moving item in the back side of the warehouse where I need to take lot of time to go pick up from there and send it to the customers, obviously it will be uh, not a good idea because I have to go back all the way to the back end of the warehouse, bring the product and give it to the delivery location. So, therefore, uh, where should I locate my fast moving items is an important decision. Where should I keep the slow moving? Let us say uh, for a particular item demand occurs once in a month. So, obviously, I will not keep it near the delivery station, I will keep it at the back side uh, so that the movement is not being hampered. Then there are, there are options like zone, zoning. So, in warehouse like clustering algorithm are being used uh, for defining like which zone is uh, should be used for which items. So, there are many products like specifically those who are managing e-commerce warehouses like few products are ordered together. I know based on my past experience, past data. There are, there are few items which are ordered together. So, if the items are ordered together, I will keep them together in the warehouse. So, that it becomes easy for me to picking up uh, during the picking up process. So, therefore, I need to zone, create zones in the warehouse. So, that I can keep the items which are ordered together, I will keep them together. So, that pickers can pick them together and send it. So, my total picking time will be minimized and searching cost also will be minimized inside the warehouse. Then we also saw the example of uh, video analytics, uh, VID, video analytics in warehouse. So, we saw this in the context of inventory count in the last lecture. So, if I if there is inventory discrepancy uh, between ERP inventory uh, count as well as physical inventory count that can be done using uh, video analytics like a drone can be fitted a video camera can be fitted on top of drone then the drone can go along the aisles and scan the products each and SQ each and every SQ and comes back and gives me the report of inventory discrepancy. So, these are interesting examples of analytics in the context of warehousing. Then we have logistics and transportation. Here also like a lot of uh, opportunities are uh, there. So, I will give one example which is not discussed in the last class uh, related to the delivery. Okay. Suppose there are some, uh, some manufacturing facility are there in India, their suppliers are located outside India. Okay. So, some of the suppliers are coming from uh, Europe, some of them from America, some of them from China. So, obviously, they come through sea route. So, what happens uh, when you uh, bring the products through sea route, obviously, there will be delays sometimes uh, because of emergency situation like now, Suez Canal incident happened, then Panama Canal incident happened, 
uh, since it is coming through C root there might be delay. So, let us take an example that you uh, get to know the supplier told you that the product will be delivered to you in 50 days. Okay? 50 days the part or component will come to you. If it comes on 50th day exactly, I am happy because it is coming as per my plan. So, I do not have to change anything. But suppose it comes on 55 days. Suppose the product from the supplier comes 55th day. Then 5 days I have to wait for the uh, parts to arrive. So, mean sometimes it may happen that I have to stop my production because part is not available. I have been delayed by 5 days. So, many a time I may have to outsource it from the local uh, suppliers who will charge me hefty amount. So, therefore, it is not good for me. Similarly, let us say sometimes it may come on 46 days also. The CEO was good, everything was smooth and I got the product on 46th day. Is it good for me? Yes, no. It is again not good for me because my part has arrived in the facility 4 days before. So, I have to build up the inventory and my uh, space will be lost. So, therefore, if the product comes before, it is not good because my inventory holding cost have to pay. If the product comes after the expected delivery day, that is also not good. So, therefore, I need to make sure that it is coming exactly on the same day. So, lot of analytics are being used and nowadays specifically the predictive analytics to predict when my part will be arriving in my uh, manufacturing facility. If it is coming from foreign suppliers, overseas suppliers, specifically there will be delays uh, because of long distance travel. So, lot of mathematical model AIML based models are being used to predict when the parts will be arriving in our uh, facility. Then uh, we also talked about a uh, few examples from transportation in the uh, last uh, lecture related to uh, driver's fatigue. Na? So, through image analytics, through image analytics, I can check driver's fatigue. So, if I can track their eyes movement continuously, take the image, and if there is no movement in like eyeball, movements are not there continuously for some time, I would be able to predict that driver may fall asleep. So, therefore, I will alarm them and uh, make them uh, aware that you may fall asleep. So, take rest, wash your eyes and then again drive. Then the la another interesting example uh, of analytics in demand planning and lot of energy and time are being spent in demand planning. It is a very, very important aspect and most of the companies will have a demand planning team itself. So, they have to predict what will be the demand. And as you talk, talked about like customer behavior are changing. Okay? So, they have been uh, uh, seeing uh, lot of advertisement in the uh, TV, media about their competitors product, um, about co competitors product, brand. Customer nowadays are very much aware about all the brand which are coming. Customers are aware because they are using the social media. So, they are getting information. So, customer is having lot of information about each and every product. So, they can take the uh, decision based on their own understanding. And since customer behavior is changing and it is being influenced by social media and then um, advertisement. So, obviously, very difficult to plan for it. So, nowadays demand sensing is very important topic like FMCG industries are actually like they are putting lot of efforts uh, to make sure that they can estimate their uh, demand properly. Uh, not only FMCG other industries also are spending uh, equal amount of money uh, and uh, preparing data scientists, creating data science team uh, to make sure that their planning is done properly. So, if they can plan properly, if they estimate the demand properly, the half of that thing is done. So, therefore, a lot of efforts are being given for the demand planning and uh, forecasting. 
so for each and every excuse what will be my demand what will be my uh, demand in six like six months time what will be my demand in two months time what will be my demand in next 15 days so continuously i have to keep on tracking and i may change or update the demand also so lot of prediction modeling are being used uh, for uh, demand planning and since consumer behavior is changing the traditional forecasting tool uh, may not be applied in every context okay so traditional forecasting tool can capture seasonality it can capture trend but since there are a lot of variability in the demand and if i have to capture those aml model would be a uh, good fit for that and obviously companies are going uh, in that direction so in the summary like what we did in the uh, last lecture and this lecture we talked about what is analytics we discussed what are the various components of analytics like i need to have data then from the data i will develop model the model will help me to give better decision and using the decision it should create value for the organization then we also talked about big data and its characteristic especially the 6 v of big data like volume variety velocity variability value and veracity so these were the 6 v's then we talked about type of analytics descriptive diagnostic predictive and uh, prescriptive and we gave lot of examples from supply chain management domain uh, how these analytics can be used so i am sure like uh, you have enjoyed this uh, session so thank you and look forward to seeing you in the next lecture if you have any doubt please uh, write it to us we will be happy to answer your queries thank you and see you in the next class Thank you so much.